Hello. I am Matt Hello. Matt, and I'm joined by the excellent Tom Forsyth, who was a developer on the Xbox version of this game. Hello there. Yes, I was. Way back in the day. Too long ago. Did you know that it's actually coming up to the 20th anniversary of this game in September? Did you know that? I uh, did not realize that. That is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I think it's the 3rd of September, if I'm not mistaken. I might, I might do something special because this is one of my one of my favorite games. But anyway, so I know this has never been done at a licensed on before because I'm pretty much the only person that actually runs it. So if someone had done it, I would have seen it already. Um, but this is a very, very special game. It's very broken. There's a lot of cool stuff we're going to do. So let's just get into it first. So New Game Plus basically means that I have every save file. I mean, I have every level set for a specific loadout. So if, if you see here, like this is my loadout for this level. And then like later on, I've got one with a UV grenade as well. Um, we also do New Game Plus because it allows us to use the UV grenades from the start of the game. That just makes some of the fights a lot easier because it basically just wipes out rooms of enemies. Um, and that's the only reason why we do New Game Plus. It just, it's just more like quality of life, pretty much. So, timer will start when I skip the first cutscene. Uh, so, I'll, I'll give you a countdown for when that's going to happen. So, let's get into it. We, we In New Game Plus, we don't do the training level. Because it's kind of, like, irrelevant and then we need to do it. I don't think there's any skips in it anyway. No, it's boring. <laughs> right, so... Oh, okay. Three, two, one, go. So straight away, just gonna turn around, ignore those enemies. We're gonna come over to this, uh, this nice box. I'm just gonna fall into the gap and just clip through the wall. No big deal. I'm out of bounds. This really sets the tone for the whole run. Yeah, just, just how broken at this game it is. A lot of nothing. This game, you also need to, if you're running this game, you need to know the level layouts like the back of your hand because you're going to be traversing through either a com complete white, complete black for the most of it. So, like, I've got the, the layouts of these maps engraved in my brain that I just know where I'm going out of bounds. So this is the end of the level, pretty much. We just kill these two and just walk in here, and that's it. First level's done already. There you go. Much quicker. So I am playing on an actual PS2, which I usually wouldn't do, so... The load screen is going to be a bit longer than usual, but I wanted to do a marathon run on actual hardware for a change, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, it's pretty cool that you could get this uh, even working, as you say, 20 years later. So this level is the shortest level in the run. If you blink, you'll miss it, which is convenient because this level normally is actually quite long because uh, you're meant to destroy these three like uh, electric boxes and come back here, but we can just jump out of bounds. If we if we side hop into that pot, it just forces us through the wall, and we just go in the elevator. So destroying um, those that, three that boxes level. would allow you to get in the elevator, but we just completely skip all that. So yeah, that's <laughs> fastest level in the game. I think that was one of the first skips I actually found. I've been running this game for like seven years, but I've been playing this game since I was a young kid when it came out. So I, this game is like second nature to me at this point. But I've done a lot I mean, of testing I'll, on this game. And... Yeah, a lot of the skips you'll see um, look very similar in that essentially they all, you all get out of bounds, you walk through the level a bit, and then you go back in bounds a bit later. But yeah. I'm really impressed by the number and of different ways you get out of bounds. Like it's stairs and boxes and like there's a hundred different ways to get out of bounds. So, you know, keep an eye out for those because they're all slightly different fun bugs. Yeah, we're going to do some tech right here, which is like the main out of bounds tech in the run. So when you side jump in this game, the game kind of doesn't know where to put you when you land if you jump from like a higher height. So like right here, I'm going to get to the top of these stairs and I'm just going to side jump and it just clips us into this. Uh... Basically, the game thinks we're going to land on the stairs, but we don't and we land on the ledge above the stairs. So the game still tries to put you on the height of where the stairs would be. So then you just end up clipping through the, uh, the floor and that. And then we just go to the end of the level again. So sadly, during develop, one. yeah, during development, we 
we had just an endless number of these out of game bugs. And what used to happen is you just fall forever. And so you can't do anything. Game's dead. You have to restart the level. And, you know, we'd find these bugs and fix them and find them and fix them and find them and fix them. Clearly, we didn't find them all. Um, but at, at some point, we added that artificial floor. So at least you didn't fall endlessly and you could walk back in the level and, like, finish the game, even if this bug happened to you. So that's why you can do all these skips is because we added an artificial floor that you couldn't fall through. Um, and I'm very glad you did. Like. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, so this level is going to be the first level where we're not going to do any skips. But basically, this level is basically a loop around. We have to destroy these uh, 17 computers and then go back to the start of the level to trigger the end of the level. So we can't go out of bounds and just go to... What's this guy doing in the corner? We can't, like, just go out of bounds and go straight to the end because the end is where you start. And the trigger doesn't spawn until you destroy the computer, so we have to do this normally. Sadly. This level was, we used to have some much smarter AI, and this level was where we discovered that that smarter AI was actually not a good idea. So you'd, you'd go in the front door, and you'd beat some people up, and then one of them would get low health, and he'd say, oh, I'm not feeling great, great, and he'd run off, and he'd get some help. So he'd bring a couple of his mates from elsewhere in the level, and he'd bring them back and, and, and come and fight you. Now, you'd still be fighting the first guys, and normally in this game you, you do a lot more hand-to-hand -hand combat. That, that's just, you know, shooting them because it's quicker. But you'd normally be punching and kicking them and stuff like that. Anyway, so you'd be punching and kicking them, and a couple of guys would turn up, and then you'd keep punching and kicking them, and then one would get unhealthy, and he'd run off and get some more people. And this would go on and on and on, and you'd just be in the first room punching and kicking guys for like 20 minutes. And eventually you'd run out of guys to punch and kick, which is great, and then there's nobody else because literally everyone in the level has come and you just fought them in the first room. And that's where we went, oh, okay, having smart AI is not actually that much fun. So we turned that off. Yeah, now they're very dumb. Yeah, the AI in this game. Although another developer, Mike Diskett, he also admitted to me that he made the enemies block the doorways to annoy the player. And it, 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 it is very annoying, I will say that. <laughs> yeah, Disky wrote most of the AI, and um, he tried. Yeah, he tried a bunch of really clever stuff and smart AI, and it just wasn't fun. So, turned out that dumb AI was more fun. All right. <laughs> so right there, I did a glitch where if you use the UV grenade and then kick out of the animation as it's about to explode, you can then gain control. And what I do there is I jump over the railing, and what that does, if I time it correctly, is it would kill all the enemies on the bottom floor and all the enemies on the top. So you literally just complete that room full of enemies in, in like, a second. It, it's funny because the dialogue, like, overlaps itself, because Whistler's like, you can't open that door till you're finished in here, and then it just goes, door open, because I've killed them all. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Oh, what do you have for dinner? Beans, man. And then another... Another out of bounds glitch there. So again, the same thing. We jump to make the game think we're going to land on the stairs when we don't. And we just fall out the bat, out of the map. And then we just go into the final area. So this level is actually meant to be quite long casually. But I don't care for doing long levels. So I just go straight to the end. It's also meant to be quite hard level as well. But next up is meant to be the hardest level in the game. Well, hardest level at the start of the game. None of the levels in the run are actually hard because we skip all the hard stuff. This game is very difficult casually it's an absolute pain in the ass speedrun is not as bad because we skip all the hard stuff um casually this is not the hardest level but it is one of the hardest but this level in the speedrun has the hardest glitch that we've got to do yeah the, this this game was intentionally difficult because they were really worried about short play times and getting reviews that like oh it's only you know 10 hours of gameplay or something so there we go yeah, I just no, shortened so it just... down to 40 minutes, no big deal. <laughs> exactly. So we but, yeah, wipe out I, every enemy it in was this room. originally quite difficult. Yeah, this game... I wouldn't even do a glitch to speedrun of this game. But I've done a speedrun of all objectives, which is quite a lot longer and there is a lot of stuff more you have to do, but you can still do skips in it. So you still skip some of the hard stuff, which is fine. But I, I don't have a record of that anymore. I forgot to save it because I'm a dum-dum. Anyway, 
So what we're going to do is up here there's a locked door. And you would have to go in this level the other way to unlock it and then come all the way back. But I'm going to do a glitch to clip through the door and it is very difficult. But it's so I'm going to get cool right in the corner. I'm going to line myself up here. I need to do a, a pretty precise side jump. Oh, oh first try. Nice. nice. So if you side jump right and left at a really specific angle when you're standing at a specific spot, if you time it perfectly, you'll basically land in the middle of the railing and the game doesn't know what to do and it just kind of warps you through the door. I don't know how it works. It just does, but it's very difficult. And I'm really glad I got that first try. Yeah, so he was meant to do something and open that door before he came and got this canister, but he's he's just clipped through the door. Now, of course, he's got to get the canister back through the door, which is still closed. So... I'm just going to put it in the doorway. Like you do. So now the canister's in the door. <laughs> because we didn't think to check the collision between the canister and the door, because you can't get the canister until the door's open. Oh no, you are joking. Ugh, I messed that up. Yeah. I literally said to you right before I start you watch I get stuck in the floor. Yeah, if you if you do that jump wrong, you get stuck in the floor. That's a that's upsetting because now I've got to do that other glitch again. This is the hardest level for sure to to speed run like this, yeah. Yeah, cause this level's very reset heavy. Most of the rest of the run is consistent if you're good enough at it, but this level that clip through the door is really random and it's just it kills a lot of runs if you grind in for a good time, so. Yeah, it's annoying. I'll just do it again. You just get to watch more blade. It's fine. <laughs> it's funny, this you know, this the design of this game was meant to be it, it was Disky said it was Robotron. Um that was the that was the sort of we wanted to do a modern Robotron, but with punching instead of shooting. Um, so there was this idea of like, you know, Robotron has has you have two sticks as controllers, one one to move, one to shoot, which at the time was really revolutionary. This was like the eighties, and um, and so we wanted to do the same, but with punching and kicking. And um, uh, I thought it will work really well. People didn't like it. They want to press Where's buttons to punch. What is he doing? Great AI. Well, you know. I think he was trying to hide from me even though I was right right there. Well, let's see if I get it first try again. Nope. <laughs> yeah, this is this is I mean I made it look easy because I got it first try, but it really isn't. Just gonna troll me now. There we go. For some reason it freezes when you do it on PS2 sometimes. Like on an actual console, it freezes when you go to clip through. It's weird. It's because it hasn't loaded the other side. Because the door's closed, so yeah. it doesn't. Ex it, it it knows well you can't see through the door, so that, so it has to actually load that bit off disc because it goes like, oh shit, what are you doing here? So that's <laughs> that's probably why. Yeah. All this so, stuff is streamed, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it's streamed, though, because if it wasn't, it, a lot of the skips probably wouldn't work the way they do. Unless, like, you could still That's hit right. triggers to end the level without the level actually being there, so... Yeah, I mean, the streaming tech was something we worked hard on, and, and um, we'd never done that before, and I think not it hadn't been used in many games before. So there we go. The, I, I think I left it too long when I did it the first time, but yeah, it's that's the only thing that can really go wrong in this level is getting stuck there. Yeah, and of yeah. course it would ha it would have to happen during the marathon. But it's fine. So now we just go back up and, uh, as you probably could have guessed, just grab the canister through the door. Yep, because again, didn't check. Why would the canister be in the door? Oh, I thought I forgot to put it there for a second because it wasn't no, no, picking no, no. it up. That would have been yeah. bad. I have actually, I've done that before. Not in a marathon run, but I've actually been doing runs and I've just completely forgot to pick up the canister and put it in the door and just <laughs> out of bounds again. Right yeah. away. Oh, 
So I clip through the door and then just go straight yeah. back out of bounds. I'm not a very smart person. And I would just go straight back to the end of the level. So as you can see, down that corridor is where we would have to go normally. Who are you? What's he doing? Huh? You have to make sure all these enemies are dead because um, if they shoot you when you, like if you get attacked while you're holding the canister, you can't move. But if you get punched, sometimes you can get stunned off and you just can't move and you die. And it's very annoying. Yeah, I'm gonna play it safe yeah. and just kill them. Um, and I, and I actually got stun locked uh, right there in that same spot yesterday when I was practicing, so not that and uncommon, but it can go. happen. It, it's, it's going alright. It's kind of unfortunate that I got stuck, but it's fine. Yeah, it happens. Now we're on the second chapter of the game. Which, ironically, has the most boring level. It, yeah, it is a little bit. A nice a nice ten minute escort level that you can't do nothing in. But we're not doing that yet. We've still gotta get through this level first. So we kill these enemies to get them out of the way. I'm gonna jump behind this newspaper stand. And then we're gonna like back kick and that pushes us through the wall for some reason. Uh, you might think that like it's really easy to do this, but it's not. Like even if you get into a tight space, um it, it doesn't always Guaranteed to get you to, to clip like there's a lot of times that it won't inspect. It's really specific to where you do it Like later on in the game. There's this like electric chair that you can literally clip right behind and you're like 70% out of bounds and 30% still in bounds and you just can't clip through it. It's really random I mean we did you know, we did find a lot of these bugs and mostly fix them. So you know, you are finding the corner case of the corner case, and it, I think it's quite impressive that you can do that repeatedly. Um, I just like trying but, to find glitches in games. Like I, I've probably spent like, a, like thousands of hours on this game just trying to find nope. new skips and stuff. That that white stuff on the right—that's level geometry that we left in. It's you can't actually go over there, and there's no textures, but it's it got collision. You can the... go in it. I think it's like a train yeah. station or something that's just left there. And then we just. Never removed it. <laughs> Maybe the level was too long with it. I mean, I guess you never expect anyone to get out here to see it, so. Nope. Nope. So we just forgot to clean it up. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we just basically just go run to the end again and just jump back in bounds here. Yeah. That's it. And now we've got the escort level. So this, this level takes about 10 minutes and it's really boring. We basically have to escort Whistler as he places some explosives. That's literally what the description of the mission is. Escort wishes as he plays is the explosive. Yeah, I mean, you nearly play this one just straight as is. I think there's yeah. one, one skip or something. Yeah, one little one. So if you, you, this is a perfect time for you to tell some stories. So you should tell the, uh, the the tutorial story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so you didn't you didn't play it, but there's a tutorial where, you know, you, you get taught, you know, how to shoot things and how to punch things and all that sort of stuff. Anyway. Um, so... You know all these jumping things that you um, that you're using to glitch out. So we we were, we you know, we we initially had a lot more jumping, right? Because Blade's meant to be this athletic guy, right? He jumps around all the place and does, you know, lots of acrobatics. And so we we initially had a lot of jumping puzzles. You know, you have to jump over this gap or you have to jump up here and stuff like that. And they just weren't fun. And also, you know, with the combination of the various bugs, like they weren't very reliable. So they were really frustrating to play. So one by one, we'd be like, oh, is this jumping puzzle? Do we really want it? And we'd sort of take them out and go, no, that's better like that. Um, and we finally re removed uh, a jumping puzzle and said, all right, yeah, that, that's much better. You know, none of this, you know, falling randomly to your death. It's just not fun. And then someone said, what? Hang on, how many jumping puzzles are left in the game? And we're looking through and like, uh... oh, there's one. It's in the tutorial. It's where it teaches you how to do jumping puzzles. <laughs> and that was the only one in the entire game, is the one in the tutorial where you have to do a jumping puzzle. And then there aren't any more. We yeah, took them all it's out. brilliant that I never, <laughs> I never realized that until you told me. The, 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 and I put two two together and I was like, wait, that's. You never actually jump over a single gap ever in the game apart from the tutorial level. That's great. 
And if you look in the game, you can see where they were because they're like, it's a bridge. Why is there a bridge here? Well, because it used to have a gap in the middle and you used to have to jump over. I think some of these bridges you used to have to actually jump the gap. Really? And we're just like, but, but like those, right? Oh, right, and, right, and yeah, yeah. Like that thing, right? And you're like, but it just wasn't fun. You'd fall and, oh, God, i got to get up again. You know, it just was just frustrating. We just took them all out. I sh what I should do is, uh, one of these times, I should do a marathon run of doing new game instead so you can actually see the differences. But there's not really much, but... Literally, all, all, all the difference between new game plus and new game is, is where you would use the UV grenade, you wouldn't use the UV grenade. You'd just shoot them with the pistol, pretty much. That's the only difference. Yeah, or, or punch them if you run out of yeah. ammo. Yeah. And UV grenades are very helpful because it can clear like complete rooms. So new game just it just makes the game a lot harder to not die in pretty much. There's some levels like this one which is awful without the UV grenades because this level introduces you to Reapers. And if you play the game casually, at this point in the game it expects you to have enough points to unlock the UV grenades, but since we're speedrunning and we skip all the levels, we don't. So yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, you can't kill the Reapers without the UV grenades. So in new game, this level you just have to kind of hope the Reapers don't follow you and beat up you or Whistler. And everything in this level is tied to Whistler. It doesn't matter how fast I go. So I need to just basically make sure that no enemies attack Whistler because if they hit him or whatever, he'll slow down and that loses you time. So yeah. The other cool thing about this particular level is look how brightly lit it is. Isn't it lovely? I mean, for a sewer, this is a really, really well lit level, right? And the reason is, like, in the movies, you know. Oh, yeah, see, this is a Reaper. The UV grenade didn't actually kill him, so now I've got to just hope he doesn't follow me around. You can knock them down, but they will get back up. They get up again, yeah. So in the movies, right, Wesley Snipes, you know, he's, he's a black dude, he's got black hair. He's wearing black armor. Oh, he did get up. And, oh dear. and so in the movies, you know, he's this dark shadow that, you know, just appears out of nowhere and kills things. Um, the problem with that in a game is you can't see what you're doing because it's just this black blob and you're like, what's going on? So we had to really brightly light, light these levels. So these are the best lit sewers you have ever seen. Look at this. So it's a bit goofy the way, the way it's so bright, but, you know got to be able to see what you're doing. I want that Reaper to follow me. Also, so this isn't this isn't Wesley Snipes, right? We weren't allowed to use Wesley Snipes in the game because we didn't have his rights. We had the rights to the movie and the character, but not Wesley Snipes himself, except for the the uh, Explosive picture on the cup on the cover yeah. of the box. Yeah. So they went back and forth for ages with the publisher. We'd, we'd give them a version of Blade and they'd go, no, no, too, looks too much like Wesley Snipes. And then we go, okay, try this one. And they go, doesn't look enough like Blade. Like, what? But what does Blade look like? He looks like Wesley Snipes. So, so it took ages to, to get a version of Blade that looks like Blade, but doesn't look like Wesley Snipes. It was a real farce. The licensing of for, for movie tie-ins are just such a pain. Because all these different people own all different little aspects of everything, and yeah, it was kind of annoying. Oh, there's he's, wait, that Reaper just did a full 360 around the entire map because he came from that way. What? Oh. This guy's going to annoy me now. I'm telling you. Good pathfinding, yeah. you see. We're nearly at the end, though. This level's nearly done. We're going to get back to the good stuff. I'm pretty close. It's also weird that I've found that the, the music is kind of like really inconsistent on this version. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the way I'm playing the game or it's the actual NTSC version itself. But the, like the music, like sometimes even in the core, the final level, the, literally the music just doesn't play. Same in Bloodsuckers as well. It just does not play. I don't know why. Go away, sir. What do you want? This is what happens when one UV grenade doesn't kill the Reapers. Is it just... Right. Just get in your way. Also, fun fact, this is the only level where I would usually do all the sub-objectives in, because the sub-objective in this level is to kill the Reapers, and since we usually end up killing them all... Yeah, that's true. But I can't kill that one, because 
I don't have. I can't waste the Yui gonna just kill one enemy. I think he's gone anyway. I mean, talking about the film tie-in stuff, right? So the original idea of this game was to ship the game and the film at exactly the same time. And so when we when the project got greenlit, we knew exactly how long we had. We had 18 months to do the game, not a day longer. So that was kind of scary because um, we'd never done anything on Xbox. We'd never done anything on PS2. Um, and uh, obviously we'd, we'd never worked with blade so it was a little bit tense we knew time was tight and then it was there was about six months of the project left and they said oh we're moving up the uh, the film date so we're going to release the film like three months early is that cool by you guys we're like wait so you want the game we've only got six months left and you want the game in half that time it's not going to happen and they were kind of really angry but like sorry mate the conference the 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 contract said ship the game on this date that's what we're going to do it's not our fault you want to move the film up so, so, so all here that... there's the, the the cool tech that we're basically going to do where oh yeah since yeah. we did that side jump stuff but for whatever reason if you jump sideways and then hold backwards and press jump again you jump back the same way you jumped from so right there we tricked the game into thinking we were going to jump off the ledge but then jumped back so we just clipped through it and yeah that's pretty cool that that happens <laughs> and again just gonna jump to the end of the level yeah yeah so uh so yeah that was the that was the fun of the f the film tie-in thing is so eventually they so the film released early and and then we shipped i think with the video release or something um but yeah we we were on time but the film was early so that was a bit of a shame and that's that level that's that level. And I've got uh, just a movement level pretty much. But this level has the best song in the game. It's pretty catchy. That's if it actually even plays because, I don't know, this game doesn't like me. Does it play on the emulator? Or yeah, it plays on fine on PS3 and emulator. It's not on this version. Because I'm... Basically, that glitch that you saw me do in Acid Rain where I clipped through the door only works on the NTSC version. I don't have an NTSC right. PS2, so I'm basically booting the game through uh, ESR with a modded gotcha. memory card. And I mean, the music is playing, but I've noticed some differences, like the music kind of bugs out sometimes as well. I don't know. It hmm. could be something Weird. to do with how I'm booting the game. See, the music just went off. It just turned off. Weird. It literally just turned itself off. Okay. I think Perfect it is to time. do with that. It must be to do with that. Because, um, like, the PAL version works fine, but I can't do that skip on PAL. It's funny, because if it wasn't for that, PAL is actually faster. Just in mm. general. Mm -hmm. But because of that one skip, it saves like a minute and a half, so you have to play NTSC. Which is a shame. I'm still, I'm still confused why they're different. Why NTSC and PAL are different. I think it's the, the FPS, because obviously PAL runs at 25. Um, and... NTSC runs at 30, I think that's the reason why you can't do that glitch on power, because there's not enough frames, I'm assuming. I'm the other, well, and the fact that it's different on PS2 and Xbox as well, so that might be the case. But also I remember... Well, it does work on Xbox. Yeah. It's not on PAL. I wonder if, if the PAL and NTSC versions are actually different versions. Because well, you I said remember... that the NTSC version was released, I remember you fixed the bug with the core with all the AI like breaking in, yeah, in, in I, NTSC I just, but not PAL, maybe that's why. I remember we put one of the versions in for, you know, you have to go through this phase of, of test, soak testing the game where you're not, the developer isn't soak testing the game, it's like Microsoft or Sony. And we put just one version in to soak test while I think we were doing the translations or something so we put one version in for soak testing and then while they were doing that we were doing like translations and stuff like that and we found a bug and we fixed a bug and we said oh we've got to remember to fix that bug in in the other version and then then they came back and and the public and, and we were like all right uh we'll redo that version with this bug fix and the publisher said oh no we we, we me, sent sir. that off to be printed already so, so so they are actually different very slightly different versions with like 
one or two bug fixes in. So I don't know if that's the difference. I just, man, it was a long time well, ago. There is, do, you, do, you, do you remember we were talking about the French version? Yeah, and I don't, do you know, I don't know where the French version came from. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> well, do you know like how like when Blade goes like, her at the end of a level and like pumps his fist and then it fades out? Yeah. That fade out on the French version happens instantly. Weird. For some reason. I don't know why. That's so But weird. the French version is literally just the PAL version with more annoying dialogue. Yeah. Pretty much. Be. Because I, I don't, I, I believe I tested to see if that glitch, um, with the door in acid rain worked on the French version. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I would have tested that. Hmm. I think the French version would be faster than if that's the case than than NTSC. The only special version I remember was the German version, and that's because there is no German version. <laughs> oh. Okay, I went the, way past the area I was meant to go to, but it's fine. I didn't get stuck in bands just, or anything. Sorry, I'm distracting you. No, no, you weren't distracting <laughs> me. I just lined it up wrong. But because a lot of this game is, you are literally jumping in the dark. Mm. I know, I know. I don't so know I just kind of like angled my myself a bit wrong <laughs> there, but it's fine. It's better to be more right than more left, because I would have just jumped back in bands in the wrong spot and got stuck. So it's fine. This this game had too much. Gore for Germany, so they they basically just refused the to game certify just it. Oh, it just Ooh. took a long time to load. Good old CDs. Oh, I guess DVDs. Yeah, so yeah, this, this, this DVD. it 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 wouldn't pass a whatever it was a fifteen or a twelve rating in Germany because it's because we had you know decapitations and things like that, and so they. They said no. It gets an 18 rating in Germany, and at the time there were basically no places that would sell 18 rated games apart from sex shops, um, which, which basically means you know there's no point in releasing it in Germany if if it if the only place you can buy it is in a you know literally a, a, a sex shop. Um, so I don't think we ever did um, release it in Germany. I think we might have done it in Austria, so all the Germans had to go to Austria to buy it. Strangely enough, that was a bit of a hassle for them. So I don't think it sold very well in the German version. I don't think people were like that excited about getting Blade to do that. So <laughs> we did try one thing, which was um, we put black, you know, censored bars over the blood spurts and stuff, and the and and the decapitation. So when you chopped someone's head off, the head would still go flying, but there'd be this black box over this head so you could so this black box would fly through the air and you couldn't see what it was but so it, it just looked even more disturbing than not having it censored so it just looked really goofy so we just, we just didn't oh, bother this is the only the one spot as well where like the game can like crash if if you don't trigger that cutscene there and just do this to end the level the game will just crash no idea why but you have to trigger that cutscene or the game will just freeze if you do this yeah. right here and trigger this scene, it just crashes. Very strange. I think the cutscene is what loads her, and so if you if you don't trigger it or something like that, yeah, I don't remember. Maybe the game doesn't know what to do, like it, it doesn't know where to go, so then it just kind of like freezes. I don't know. So now we've got the escape. This is the next, the second escort mission at and, and i say escort very lightly because it's not the same as whistler um whistler you have to follow him whereas dr grant follows you so you can still get to the end of the level but this game is very smart well i say very smart uh it's just like just finding ways to deal with people trying to run through it if you run way far ahead of like your ai companions it will just spawn enemies on top of them so yep. what we are going to do is we're going to go out of bounds to skip the level, but we need to be quick um, to get to the end trigger before she dies, pretty much. I love that you're shooting the guys oh, as they're back. falling out the ceilings. I've got to go fast. That's right. So there was a cool glitch we used to do here earlier that would involve like abusing like no collision on a wall, and you could just jump through it, but that way is actually about 10 seconds slower now, so we're going to do a new route. 
So I'm just gonna kill these I'll guys see... so they get out of the way, and then we're gonna just clip through these stairs. I've like seen that. you do this level like four or five different ways. It's pretty impressive. There's a lot of ways to do stuff in this game, to be fair. But then right I here, love... there's this switch we have to shoot. And then we just go over. Oh, okay, don't do that. It's weird, if you reload in this game while you're not moving, they will just stand still and you can't move him. It's really annoying. Oh, right. And now we've got the one and only boss fight of the game. And it's shit. It's got all these cool, sometimes when you're fighting, it does these cool one-on-one -on -one camera actions where you do this individual, like you stab a guy through the face or something like that. And then the camera focuses in. And those really annoy Matt Matt because um, they slow him down so much. Yeah. In this level, it's really bad because if you get one, like, right as Vorpal's about to come down, he's, you're just going to mess up the cycle and he's going to zap you. But we have to destroy these to, like, reveal his health bar. And it's actually faster to backstab him because you don't get the animation of actually breaking them. And we've got to hope he drops down, which he did. This is really good. And then give him a whack. All right, perfect. So now, hopefully, if if he's done correctly, we can just come by this door. He'll go into the middle of the arena. Again, it's not playing music for some reason, so he'll be in the middle over there. We stay by the door, he'll drop straight down in the exact same place every time. So this is literally going to be this boss, is me doing this over and over again. And hopefully not dying, because these vampires are really annoying. Vorpal isn't the problem in this boss, it's the vampires. Yeah, that's Vorpal that. isn't so that the scary one, part. One. I don't know how is many it... times we have to hit him, but I do know that once his health bar is fully depleted, we have to hit him one more time, which is also yeah. very strange. Those one-on-one -on -one kills, they can... So the problem is that if the boss drops down and oh, hits you when you're doing one... Yeah, I got one, like, uh, really late it. then, so... Yep. No! And then the vampire hit me. Are you serious, dude? It's is he just gonna... not cooperating. No, is he gonna... Yeah, he's... Okay. I'm not... Usually he only does that if you hit him, but for some reason he went back into the middle. All of that happened, all of that stemmed from that one-on-one -on -one kill animation, because he moved. And then the vampire hit me when I tried to hit him, which knocked me out the animation. Told you. Pretty good. Told you, we put him in specifically to annoy you. Thanks. <laughs> We actually spend a lot of time on the Xbox version making them look super proper cool. There's like self-shadowing that happens between the two characters and, you know, yeah, it was, it was kind of cool. Don't hit me. Okay. All right. So that's a good start. Hopefully we can keep it this way. What is he doing? This is not good. I'm going to have to jump. Oh, and it still that. hit me. Seriously? Oof. He's meant to go into the middle once you've hit him, but for some reason he wasn't, and I don't know why. Alright, he's back there. It's really, it's really, I shouldn't have played this on this, because it's really weird without the music. <laughs> kind of makes it seem really dull. This game has really good music. I, w I, I must say, the music's pretty cool. And there's some unreleased tracks as well that are also really cool, but since it's not playing any, it's kind of shit. Yeah, they're all Martin Oliver. He he did all my Mucky Foot's music. It was really good. I still play the sound, Startopia's soundtrack. Um, you know, just it's in my rotation because I really just enjoy those those tunes. This is really bad. I'm getting the shit kicked out of me. Of course, this level would be the one that ruins it. Like, the thing is, I can't keep attacking them, because if I attack them and I get one of these kills at the end of the animation, then I'm gonna... he's, he's gonna... move. I just need to be really careful now and hope I get lucky and don't get hit too much, because there's nothing else I can do. I wish you would stop doing this, I can't kill the rest of them. By the way, they do there infinitely respawn, I should point that out. They, they do, yeah. Here's some more. I would need to hit him three more times and I don't have any health. 
Of course, I get stunned. Don't hit me, please. Don't hit me! This is really bad. Your health does slowly regenerate, but it's like abysmally slow. Come on. I think there's a delay until you can get a one on one again, so you actually want one early on. Oh, one more. I should be fine. I'm not going to die now, but that. That was really sketchy. I, I pretty much did all of that with like virtually no health. Unless I get hit by the vampire here, that would suck. Okay. There we go. That was oh, that was unfortunate cute. that I died. Nicely done. Nicely done. I did die by the way when they zapped me and I restarted the level. I was actually yeah, dead, yeah. but because I was in the middle of a jump animation, you can't die during a jump. You can actually <laughs> infinitely survive with no health. You just keep jumping. It's Quite funny, actually. I did not know that. Yeah, but you, you can't do anything because as soon as you stop jumping, you just die. So. It's a you probably didn't program climb. the ability to actually play the death animation out when you're in the middle of a jump. That's probably what it was. Yeah, but why can you start yeah, yeah. it not a jump? That's a bit weird. Anyway. Oh, no, it's like because you can take damage while jumping, can't you? But you, if you hold the button down, you jump like on the frame, on like the first frame that you land and hit the ground if you hold it down. Yeah. There's like Weird. no delay for it to check, I'm assuming, that you're dead or not. Yeah. But sometimes if you're holding down jump, you can still just die when you land, because it must be just the frame kicks in and like realizes you're dead. Really twisted. Also, this is really laggy. We're gonna get up on this rock and then we're gonna just do one of these side jumps again to clip into it. And we'll go out of bounds. I don't remember what the story was with those weird vampires in the spacesuits. Um, sure so the Xbox sense. version is... One, it's a lot slower because it just generally loads a lot slower than PS2 because the game is like graphically like way more demanding than PS2 version is. But yeah, we have it's like also slower time. in general just because of the glitches. A lot of them just don't work. Yeah. Yeah, the Xbox, we crammed a load more in. It's like four times the poly count. It's four times the texture resolution. Um, it was it was just a much easier machine to work with, just more straightforward. The PS2 because yeah. it was it was just me doing the P the Xbox version, and then I think we had three guys doing the PS2 version. It was just a lot harder to work with. The yeah. Xbox version is like it looks really nice and. But I still think, like, just generally in terms of gameplay and stuff like that, I think the PS2 version is superior because the Xbox version in some aspects feels awkward. Like, the side jumps don't really work properly. I don't know. It's really strange. Yeah, um, which is weird because it's the same code. You know, we we didn't do you? any... Do you mind, so I'm trying to clip through this window. Some people are so rude. I don't know. I've, I've never actually seen him before. He's, he must be a fan. <laughs> Wants to join in on the speedrun. Yeah, well. So this level, we're, this is the first level where we're going to basically be going out of bounds, going back in bounds, doing some stuff, and then going back out of bounds again. Because this level, basically what we have to do... I mean, we did that in Acid Rain, but this level is bigger. There's basically two canisters we need to get to blow up these energy generator things, but um, the last one that you blow up triggers the end of the level, so you can ignore the first one. So we're going to basically do what we did in Acid Rain. I'm going to put a canister inside of a wall, um, and pretty much just... Wait, where am I going? I just got completely lost and I forgot what part of the level I was at. Hold on, let me readjust myself. Um... So yeah, so we're going to basically pull it inside this like electric like field and pick it up from the other side and skip doing the first one. But we need to uh, come over here first and turn the power on or we can't get into the room with the canisters or get out of it with them. So we have to do this first. But basically what this does, going out of bounds here, is skips unlocking the first couple of doors and going through the first area. It does save a bit of time. Please come over here, turn the power off. Electricity off. And we're gonna kill as many enemies as we can because we need this to be like 
as clear as possible when we come through so we don't have the canister because obviously you can get oh, stun locked yeah. if you have the canister this is also another level where we can get the stun lock right at the end of the level you have to run past an enemy there's a chance he can stun lock you and it's gotta hope it doesn't happen but with how well this run's been going i wouldn't be surprised if it did happen to be honest yeah there it is so we're basically just going to put it down here and use one UV grenade to hopefully kill the rest of the enemies around. Grab us some ammo. Just just to be safe. Who are you, sir? Oh, it's that guy again. Look, he's come back. It's the same dude. Persistent. Yeah, so each chapter in this game has, like, different variations <laughs> of enemies that, like, look um, different, have different outfits, stuff like that. So we just put, no. put the canister down here. There you go. Oh, weird. That's a totally different lightning effect. Hmm. I'm just going to come into this room, use the UV grenade just to kill this guy. Good. We got we got big guys, we got small guys, and we got space guys. And now we're going to use something cool. So where we would do those side jumps to like clip through floors by tricking the game, we're going to trick the game into letting us float in the air this time instead. So if we get on this... Oh, there's a little guy coming. I'm going to get it before he gets me. No, I'm not. I fell. Where is he? There he is. Yeah, this is kind of awkward to stand on this. We want to basically get as close as we can to the edge of this, and we're going to side jump. That is not a side jump. PS2 controllers are amazing. So we're going to side jump. There we go. And then it pops us onto the other side so we can float in the air and jump through this wall because it doesn't have collision if you jump high enough. There yeah, we go. Didn't, didn't put collision geometry very high. And now we have to line ourselves up here. This is kind of awkward. We clip right into this side of this wall. There we go. That's the electric thing. And so we know he's the other side. And there's the canister. This actually, this this is the the skip that I tried to find for the longest time in this game. It took forever to actually find a way to get out of bounds in that big room to actually do this. Wipe out all these guys. And now we've got some RNG. So there's going to be two guys with guns. Just before you put this canister in. I've just got to hope that they take cover and don't shoot me. And it's random. No, okay. And now I'm stuck. Okay, he took cover. That's fine. So this guy, what's he going to do? Okay, he took cover. That's fine. Right. It's very easy to die there, depending what they do. Because you cannot put a canister down when you're on stairs. It will not let you put it down. If you get stun locked on the stairs as well, you're like virtually fucked because you can't do anything so you have to either get down the stairs up the stairs and then put it down really annoying that canister was not it's a bit of a late comer to the yeah it's also weird the canisters look different on xbox well did you know that i did not they're That's red they've, they've got like the red the top the, the cylinders at the top of them are red whereas on ps2 it's just all gray we're going to jump That's on this railing this weird. is kind of awkward as well because of the sensitivity of the sticks, you have to kind of try and line your head up at a certain spot to get on this railing. Just kill these guys. That should be fine. Why would they there be different go. colours? Very weird. And we just backwards jump through the wall because there's no collision up there. I assume you guys didn't expect someone to be able to jump that high. She just didn't bother putting collision that high up. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe just skipped all that level again, pretty much. And just wipe out all these enemies just by using two UV grenades. So in the entire run, this part is the worst without them. There's so many enemies yeah. and you have to kill them all yeah, with the it's pistol. Ridiculous. It's incredibly difficult. So we've only got two levels left. Now, this next level, Bloodsuckers is by far the hardest level in the game, casually. There's so much going on. You have to do the first part of the level to get to the helipad, then you've got to ex ex escort Dr. Grant back through the level and hope she doesn't die. There's so many enemies, there's turrets, there's loads of shit going on. It's very easy to die. Like, well, not for you, it's very easy for her to die, and that's what ruins this level, but obviously, because this is, uh, you know, 
glitched speedrun, this level's really easy and it's actually very short as well. Just got to kill it these is. guys here to make this door unlock. See, I've seen you speedrun this so many times, I forget that originally it's a gigantic level that's very difficult. Yeah, this this level, this level, excuse me, jump over the railing, okay. This level is the entire reason why I put off running this game, full game, for years, because it was just so difficult, and I only ever completed one run. One full run of this game glitchless with this level in. Wow. One full run of this game with this level being glitchless, but now it's a piece of it. So we just tip through here, and let's jump up here, we go up, through this wall. Um, but that's not the main glitch. That's not the main glitch that lets you skip this level, because you'll see coming up, we're basically going to the dark energy receiver. It's this big console. It's got pink stuff all over it. But behind it, there's a gate. And this gate is like above the level plane that you can get through out of bounds. So you couldn't get through this gate from out of bounds below. But one day I just came up to it and I just turned around and just jumped backwards and I just clipped through it. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, I don't know why that works, but it does. That's and amazing. It's, it's fantastic. How, how did we miss that? It's, I, I still, Mind boggled how we missed that. It's, it actually does work by jumping forwards too, but it's very hard. It's a lot harder. I, I just don't know why. Like, it, like that is literally the holy grail because that level is awful and that... Like, I'm so glad that that gate is the way it is because it allows you to skip the hardest level in the game. If it wasn't for that one glitch, you would not be able to skip that level at all. So, and now we've got the final level. This level this is, is the also final level. shit. It's not a good level. No. Very this easy was... to die. It was it was like a month to ship, and we didn't actually have this level. We we didn't have anything. We had with some basic artwork. We didn't have any gameplay. We were sort Hello? of freaking out. There you go. We were sort of freaking out. We... On the smoke. Oh god! Don't hit me! Don't hit me! Don't hit me! Don't hit me! Or me else. Okay. Because the health so, yeah, pack this... up here. I just gotta get through that. So yeah, we we're kind of freaking out anyway. This 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 level was done very last minute, and it's pretty good for how last minute it was. But it's not. It's good. very hard. <laughs> it's extremely hard. But we're gonna make it very that, trivial. But that was all right at the time. Like it was totally fine if the last level was too hard to beat. You're just like, yeah, that's fine. That's what games did. So we're gonna just walk off here and just. I'm just going to chill on this ledge for the rest of the level. No big deal. Oh, okay, I've got some friends. You can't actually... If you're, like, attacking with, like, a sword or, like, trying to punch, you can't actually fall off of a ledge, so that's convenient that if someone lands on here with us, yeah. we can just keep hitting them. Yeah, now we're just going to wait here. So Whistler is now running around planting some more explosives. Yeah, he's over there. Um, just be, just above my, my shotgun, which... It's weird. You you have a range of, like, arsenal to use in this game. You've got, like, bulletproof vests, syringes that give you more health when you get, like, faster health regeneration. You've got the glaive. You've got a shotgun. You've got the SMG. You've got the UV grenades. You've got all this stuff. You've got uh, galva knuckles, which make you do more melee damage. But... Every level where you're forced to only use the sword, which is this level, the Vorpal boss fight, it always spawns you with a shotgun on your back. Even though I don't have one and I've never used it on the entire run. And you can't use it, it's just on your back. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't I don't remember why that was. But, um, and on the Xbox it's even weirder because just like random levels he's wearing this long coat that does physics-y things and floaty things. But then the next level, he won't have a coat. And then the next level, he will have a coat. And and the only reason he has a coat on some levels and not on others is because on some some levels, we, we it, it's quite expensive in CPU time. And we just didn't have the CPU time on that level. So we just removed it. And that's why randomly on the Xbox version, he's wearing a coat. And then he's not wearing a coat. Then he is wearing a coat. Just, it's I thought it was like... just aesthetic, you know, he starts a chapter, he gets a couple of levels into it and then just throws it off and he's like, okay. No, no, we wanted it on for the whole thing, but some levels just would would lag really badly with the cloak, so we just like... Right, I mean, this well, looks uh... still kind of cool without it, so it's not... Awesome. Yeah, well, Unless you it... do get to see all of his like proper textures on his back and all that that you wouldn't see without the coat on, or with the coat on. 
Right, I mean, we, we had to do the, the no-code version for the PS2 anyway, so... Oh, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I don't know why he's got a Because I remember I was completely lied to because on the box art of the PS2 version, it literally shows one of the screenshots with the coat on. I was like, how do you get this coat? Is it like an unlockable? Do you need to beat the game on the hardest difficulty? Like, how do you get it? And I tried for so long to figure out how just to then realize years later that it was only available on the Xbox version. And I wasn't happy. Yeah. I got lied to. Anyway, time is coming up any second now. We're just going to run up to the end of this tunnel and... Wait for Whistler to get further further up the tunnel and then the end of all will trigger, so get ready any second now. And time, there we go. That was that was Blade 2. That was Blade 2. A 20 hour game in whatever it was, 40 minutes? 50, 53 minutes. That, that run 53. was kind of bad. A lot of stuff went wrong, lost a lot of time, but overall it was decent, yeah. apart from a few levels. I'm... I'm you did it on the real hardware that was kind of cool you're gonna you're gonna see your name look oh there's your name look right yeah there we go yeah yeah and all the other heroes all the legends that made this beautiful game <coughs> and yeah this, this is this is literally just the credits just this thing exploding rocks falling and then these dudes are just standing there like they don't know what to do with themselves load bearing boss Kill the boss, place, place collapses. I wouldn't really That's call it happens. killing a boss though. You just let Whistler plant the bombs while you just run around like a headless chicken trying not to die, pretty much, the sum of this level. Yep. Not in the speedrun, because if you ever try and play this game casually, that is a good trick. Just stand on that ledge, you'll be fine. Yeah, although well, it, doesn't it, it depends which version, right? Some of the versions. Oh no, you can do it on all of them. It, it, it's oh, okay. okay so on ntsc if you stand on that ledge um the enemies will still try and pass to you i think that was the bug you were talking about that you fixed they will still try and pass to you but on pal they'll just stand there gormless and just not do anything the entire time like on pal if you turn around when you get on the ledge and look down you'll see them all just standing there staring at you they just don't do anything but on right. ntsc they're right underneath you still trying to run at you they just can't get at you yeah right yeah so it is, it is actually more sketchy on NTSC because they can drop on top of your head and knock you off. But on power, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. And yeah, like if they knock you off, you fall into the water that will damage you over time. And mm -hmm. if you've already got low health, that's not, not a fun situation. Yeah, that, that was uh, that was Blade 2. I hope you enjoyed the, the run. Um, I'm not sure what, what is coming up next. Uh, what is it? Wu Tang Shaolin style. But enjoy that. And yeah, I, I'm only doing one game this marathon, and that was that was it. Yeah, thanks thanks for watching the runner. Hope you enjoy the rest of the marathon, guys. Yeah, thank you. See you later.